Hello, welcome to Fast Physics. Today we're going to be looking at transformers. So transformers are just basically fancy devices that are used to change the size of a voltage of an alternating current. Now this is really important in the likes of the national grid where if you walk past those big transformer huts they, they hum um, when you walk past them. They're basically there to either step up or step down the voltage so you don't lose most of your energy in your wires. Now Considering that, um, it's really important for our alternating current to interact with the step up or the step down transformers in terms of the coils. Now, if we have an alternating current coming in in the primary side, so I'll label this P for primary, then we also need to have an alternating current matching it coming out the other side, which is going to be our secondary side. Now. The way this works is that when the alternating current comes in in the primary side, then it induces magnetic flux inside this iron core. So this is basically just a great big block of iron with coils wrapped around it. So it induces magnetic flux inside the core, which then in turn induces an alternating current on this side. Now, as that's happening, when it induces the alternating current, obviously it's therefore going to have also an alternating voltage. Now, from Faraday's law, we know that the induced EMF is otherwise known as the voltage, and that's dependent on the number of turns you've got, as well as the flux and the time that it occurs in. Now, we're going to be able to be controlling that flux, um, so essentially, the only way that we can change the voltage is by changing the number of coils. Now, if we use Faraday's law, then we have this equation here but we can consider it for the primary side of the coil so the voltage that's coming out of your factory compared to the number of coils on that side of your transformer now as i said this is what we're going to potentially be keeping constant so these two equations the voltage in and the voltage coming out are what we're trying to control so if we consider these for an ideal transformer And what that means is we consider it to have 100% efficiency. Obviously, that's not theoretically possible. Nothing could be 100% efficient. But if we're considering an ideal transformer, then the number of coils on your secondary, sorry, the number of turns on the secondary side of the number of coils divided by the number of turns on the primary side equals the voltage of the secondary side over the voltage of the primary side. So this is the equation we can use to find out if we have an ideal transformer what the input and output voltages are going to be. Now, if we're considering this, if we've got more turns on our primary side, than on our secondary side, what's going to happen there is our voltage is going to go down on the secondary side. If we have more turns on the secondary side, then our voltage is going to go up. So this is why we're, we're doing it. I'm gonna go onto this when we're gonna be talking about the national grid, um, but just be aware of that if you have more turns on your secondary side, it's gonna go up. If you've got less turns on your secondary side, your voltage is going to go down. So I've got a exam style question here for you. So what is the output voltage for a transformer with a primary voltage of 230 volts? 120 turns on the primary side and 350 turns on the secondary. So it's a really, really good tip is to write out what we already know. So you've got VP, VS, NP, NS, because that's the equation that we need. So our initial voltage, our primary voltage going in is 230. We're trying to find out what our output is. The number of turns in our primary is going to be 120 and the number of turns in our secondary is 350. Now immediately you should know that your answer is going to have a bigger voltage coming out because there's more turns on our secondary coil than there is on our primary one. So what we would have to do is rearrange this equation. into this. So 
So if I substitute in the numbers I know here to find my Vs, what we'll have is 230 times by 350 and then divided by 120 and that will give us an answer of 670.83 recurring. So if I was to round that up, uh, that would be to two significant figures, that's 670 volts which as i said before before it was 230 it's gone up to 670 so you have kind of a, a way to check if you've done it correctly so it's always worth being aware of that when you're doing the questions in the exam because you can basically fact check yourself now as mentioned before nothing is 100 percent efficient if we could f make things 100 percent efficient then that would be amazing we wouldn't need to worry about any energy loss and anything but it's not. But if it was 100% efficient, we would consider that power going in to our transformer would equal the power that's coming out of our transformer. So using the power equations you already know, you know P is IV. So power going in equals power coming out. So we would have power in primary and power coming out in the secondary. If that was the case then what we could also do is rearrange this equation to get this now if you think back to the equation we knew before as well that means we can also write this equation as this so you know this is something that's always worth being aware of that you can equate these three to each other so you can link it to the power now because of this this obviously is if we're considering it to be 100 percent efficient this would be in an ideal transformer however not all of them are going to be ideal so if we're kind of going to have to calculate the efficiency of our power into our power out then your efficiency, as you should know, is um, what you're getting out divided by what you're putting in. So if this is what I'm putting in, it's going to be IP VP. And if that's what I'm getting out, that will be on the top. So this is our way of finding efficiency. However, remember, efficiency is a percentage. So you'd always have to times it by 100 to get it as a percentage instead of as a single decimal so just again be aware that when you're trying to find efficiency don't forget to times it by 100 now i've already said nothing could be 100 percent efficient and this in our transformers is normally the reason why so we get these things called eddy currents and they occur in the iron core and they're basically like looping currents so if you imagine you've got a river this is why my horrendous pictures are going to come in imagine you've got a river i'm looking from above and you've got rocks in your river if you watch a river you'll notice when it comes to the rocks you get kind of little swirls near them so at some point that water is going to be opposing it to get that swirl so it's going to go be going at this point it's going to be going backwards at that point it's going to be going to be going backwards if the river is flowing this way so you know the water's doing this basically near those little bits that it's interacting with now an eddy current's very much the same um it's but it's induced by a change in the flux so rather than it being a rock that's caused a swirl it's um your flux um and your magnetic field so you know just like before if you've got a field that's changing um which you are going to be having here because it's alternating then it's going to try and act against that field now if it's acting against it at this point we're not going to have as much flow going this way so it's going to reduce that the field overall even by a little bit but each of these little bits all add up and because it's opposing it it's going to start generating heat now that is not good for our transformers um you know great big hunks of metal we don't want them getting too hot so the way we have to deal with that is ta -da! ways we can fix it so uh the first thing we can do is we can laminate the core so the, the uh, rectangle in that picture with insulation so we put layers and layers and layers of insulation in and that basically tries to amend this problem uh, we use thick copper wire, so copper is a very good conductor of electricity, low resistance, 
and obviously the thicker it is the better so you should have done that when you did your resistivity practical and also if we stack the number of transformers we've got so there's little jumps but happening over a really really great range that way your transformer is not trying to cope with too much of a change at once and then therefore you have you know less heat being generated from these eddy currents so these are multiple ways you have to know how to fix the eddy currents and what an eddy current basically is so transformers are a super important part of the national grid now if we didn't have the transformers in the national grid uh it, what it would basically do is our wires would get incredibly hot they'd be near melting if not would be melting and the amount of energy you are getting in the factory is being generated is going to be completely wasted in the wires by the time it gets to the home so so much of that energy that you're generating is going to be completely wasted and a waste of time a massive waste of money as well and resources the way we cope with that is that in your factory you generally make around about twenty five thousand volts what we do is we then step it up so we have more turns on our secondary coil And the reason for that is if we step it up using the equation for power p equals i squared r if my power needs to stay constant and we're trying to reduce the amount of resistance and um, if my voltage is going up then my current is going to go down so if i've got a lot smaller of a current then therefore my resistance is going to be lower i'm going to lose less heat so if your voltage is high that means your current's low. So if that's the case, it's really, really good because less heat. If there's less heat, then it's less wasted energy. If you've got less wasted energy, it's more efficient. And if it's more efficient, it means we save money. And it means we don't get too hot. So it's all good. Everyone's really, really happy about it. So it stepped up to 400,000 volts, which is why it's so dangerous if you touch it. Um, and after that, you then get to where your homes are. So that's when you get a step down transformer because we can't be whacking 400,000 volts out of your plug sockets. That's ridiculous and super unsafe. So we take it all the way back down to 230 volts. So it's safe for household use. And uh, then it obviously comes out your transformers, goes into the homes and people can use it. So that's how they work. And that's why they're super helpful for us. The transmission of these at 400,000 volts is a reason they have to be so high or they're buried underground. These are the things you should have learned at GCSE as part of the national curriculum. So, you know, it's maybe worth going and have a quick look over those. So now you know basically what transforms are, the equations you need to use and their link to the national grid. Thank <laughs> you.